We got somebody that's going to be calling in. Uh, he's uh, David Seth Cohen. He has a kickstarting campaign now uh, going on. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, got a movie that he's trying to produce. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Finding Sandler. I mean, uh, uh, he basically uh, needs the money to produce the show, the, this movie, whatever. I think he met the money, right? I think he got it. He got that's, he well, that's what we're going to be calling about. I mean, that's what we're going to be talking about. I think he actually, I think he's actually going to finally be able to find Sandler because I think he met his quota. You would make it seem like you know he was hiding in a cave or something, uh, Sandler, huh? <laughs> like, a, like Osama bin Laden, right? Yeah, like well, Osama. that's how he kind of felt. That's how he, stuck. he was like <laughs> finding Sandler. Maybe he was like Osama bin Laden, but uh, uh, meaning Adam Sandler. But no, I think I think Seth found Sandler. Really? Or he's going to. Well, I hope so, and and I hope that when he produces this movie, he invites us to it. Oh, he better invite us to it. No. If anybody missed it, I did a great write-up in Spot on Long Island Magazine. I write for Christine and Joe Gerani. They own Spot on Long Island Magazine. Right now, it's an online venue. You can find it at www.onlongisland.com, and I think the headliner is either my latest restaurant review that I've done, because I also do all the restaurants on Long Island, or you can go to... Um, the Finding Sandler article, and you can read a little bit about David Seth. Actually, Chris and I did the uh, did the interview together, and uh, it's a pretty pretty cool interview, right, Chris? Was that your first interview that was ever? Published? Yes, that was, and uh, she invited me down, and we did a pretty nice interview. So uh, I think we have someone calling in. Uh, oh, maybe it's David Seth Cohen. Uh, I don't think it's him, but let me check. We're good to go. Guess what? Guess yeah. who's on the line? Uh, David Seth Cohen. Hello, David. Uh, hello, hello. Good evening to you guys. How are you? How are you doing? Great. How are you doing, David? How are you? Good. Thank you for having me on your show. Hey, no oh, problem. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So what happened? We did this huge write-up on you for Spot on Long Island. You were all over the map. So I saw many venues that did write-ups. You were on radio shows. Tell us about the week that you had. It seems pretty exciting. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a, a busy week for me, um, and I'm really happy about it, to be quite honest. I've never been so busy, but it's it's a really cool busy, if you know what I mean. Um, oh, of course, I have those all the time, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Monday that you uh, you had uh, posted the article on Spot yeah. on Long Island, um, and then uh, Tuesday we actually hit our funding goal of $35,000, which Ooh, was uh, congratulations. really fantastic. Yeah, thank you very much, and... Um, then on Wednesday, uh, we actually made the news again um, on a, a New York magazine called uh, Classics Mardens. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a really cool magazine, actually. The layout and everything is, is fantastic. Um, uh, on Thursday, uh, I appeared as a special guest on a radio show that's actually based in Chicago. Uh, it's 88.3 WHCM. Called, uh, the mm-hmm. show is called Chai Town of the Big Apple. And nice. that was pretty cool. And uh, tonight, I'm, I'm chatting it up with you guys over at the Rendezvous. I know rock star this week, and we are so proud. So tell us, you you reached your goal on Kickstarter. Where do you go from here? Well, um, we actually we still have uh, about I think it's about fifteen hours left. I think the campaign ends at nine a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay. So we're actually still hoping to raise some more funds for the film. Um, you know, the the production budget that we put out there of thirty five k was the actual absolute minimum that we needed. Um, you know, what we really uh, were hoping for was more, of course, um, and what that doesn't cover, the 35, is is legal fees and marketing and branding and travel and additional filming and, and uh, distribution and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so, you know, we're hoping that people still, anybody that's listening now, will hop on board and, and uh, you know, contribute to the film. Um, but, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're really elated uh, about the fact that we made this goal. It's It's... It's just, it's awesome. It's such a great feeling when, when there are over 400 people uh, backing you and, you know, giving their love and support to the project. Oh, definitely. Now, I want to backtrack a little bit. I'd like you to tell all of our audience tonight, I want you to speak about the specific night, about, about that night um, when you passed up a drink with Adam Sandler. Can you tell that story for everybody? Yeah. Um, 
Oh, uh, Seth, Seth, before you say that, just tell us what this uh, movie is going to be about, and then that, that'll lead into uh, how you missed your drink uh, with the... Uh, sure. Um, uh, well, what Finding Sandler is really about is um, it's about my quest to have a drink with Adam Sandler, and it's a drink that I actually passed up in 1998 when I worked on the movie Big Daddy. So, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's what the movie's about. It basically follows me on my journey. Okay, and uh, and tell us uh, what happened on that fateful night when you went you went into his uh, in into his uh, hotel or something like that. Yeah, uh, Adam had an apartment that they were leasing for him during Big Daddy, and um, he wanted to wear some clothing from the set uh, to the premiere of The Water Boy, which was in Manhattan. And I worked for the costume designer; I was a production assistant, and. Uh, she had asked me to do a couple things before I went home for the night. She said, uh, first, can you take these clothes and drop them off at the, door, at the front desk of Adam's building? Just give him the doorman. Um, second, can you take this girl Autumn home? She was another production assistant in my department. Uh, third, just drop the car back off, and then you're free to go home for the night. So uh, I went to Sandler's building. I went into, you know, with the clothes up to the doorman. I handed them to him, but he was like, hey, just bring them up to him. So uh, I knew I had Autumn waiting in the car. I, I went up to Sandler's apartment. You know, I, I get to his door. I knock on the door, and behind the door, he starts messing with me. He's like, who is it? What do you want? <laughs> I'm like, it's Dave. I'm just a PA. I'm here to deliver the clothes for the premiere tonight. So he opens the door finally, and he's got this huge smile on his face, and he's like, hey, man, you want to come in for a drink? And I froze, and I said, I can't. Um, I got Autumn waiting in the car, and I got to get back down and take her home, and I got other things to do. And then it happened. It so happened that his uh, assistant, John Lochran, who's also in a lot of his movies, um, was behind him. And I, I had known John uh, from set. You know, uh, I would see him on the line at the breakfast tr truck, and we would just, you know, BS every now and then. So he was like, hey, Dave, just, just come in and at least check out the balcony that he's got here. Right. So I went in. Um, they had this wraparound balcony, you know, in in the place, and uh, I, it was an unbelievable view from there. And um, I took it, I took it all in for a second, and I was like, "Listen, guys, I got to get going," and I left. Wow. And uh, yeah, so uh, I, I I never had that chance to hang out with them again. So oh, that sucks. Yeah, so that's, so that's yeah. what this movie's about, basically. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, look, in a way, I feel like uh, I did the right thing. I mean, there was. There was a, a young lady in my car waiting in the middle of Manhattan. I didn't have a cell phone at the time, so there was no way to really contact her unless I went out of the building, got her, and brought her up, which is probably what I should have done. But, right. uh, you know, it was like kind of on the spot. I wasn't expecting it, and, you know, so it's history. Yeah, it's the heat of the moment. So, uh, most of us lose our footing in the heat of the moment. Trust me, been there a million times. Yes. Yeah, does, does Sandler know that you're chasing him? Uh, I think he does know, yes. Um, he does know? I would have to think that he knows by now, yes. By now he's got to know. I heard that uh, Michael Strahan saw your your segment. Uh, that's what I heard through a friend. Yes, I heard that I heard that he did. Yeah, that's awesome. So outside of Finding Sandler, you have your own video company. You work for Telecare. Uh, you're producing other films. What are you about? Well, I, I actually used to work uh, for Channel 29. That was... Uh, I actually resigned to make the film. So, um, but but I do have my own production company. Um, I do a lot of promotional videos um, for different kinds of clients. I, I do mm -hmm. a lot of sporting events around Long Island and uh, training videos and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you know, I basically do whatever it does. You know, whatever I could do to pay the bills. Exactly. And, uh, movie, now, what's the name of your production company? And where can we find you? It's it's called Precision Pictures. Mm hmm. And um, we're located out in Great Neck, and um, we have a, a YouTube channel that people could check out if they want to see any videos that we've done before. It's um, YouTube.com backslash Precision Pictures One. Right. We we have uh, Alicia. We have uh, somebody on Facebook uh, just sent us a message. Uh, he wants to ask. Uh, he wants to ask uh, David uh, Billy. He doesn't say where he's from, but he says, uh, "Were you in the Cupcake Wars?" <laughs> what's, your, what's what's your favorite icing? What That's so funny. That? Um, I actually did a video for a guy, um, Bruce uh, Zipes. He used to own a, a place called Bruce's Bakery. They had one in Great Neck. It was pretty famous around here. And there mm -hmm. was one in Manhattan. 
and he had uh, I, I met him at the gym actually. Uh, every time you know I'd be working out, he would be you know, he's like 65 years old and still at the gym in great shape. And um, yeah, and uh, one day we just got to talking, and he's like, so you know, I told him what I do, and because he, he asked, and uh, I happened to show him the a, a rough trailer of Finding Sandler that I had, and he, he loved it. And every single time after that moment when I showed it to him, he'd always be like, Dave, hey, Dave, hey, what's going on with that movie, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, so um, he actually got called by Cupcake Wars to um, put together a video. They wanted him to possibly be on the show if if he was good enough. So, uh, you know, he he saw me at the gym. Damey, I need you to help me with something. So um, that's what happened. I I basically uh, I made a video for him to get on the show Cupcake Wars. Right. Uh, he actually got on the show from the video, um, oh. and then when he got on the show, he got second place. Oh, so, wow, wonderful. So yeah, you weren't cool. on the Cupcake Wars. But no, you... I wasn't on Cupcake Wars myself, um, but I did get somebody on Cupcake Wars. So, yeah, it was That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, it was, totally it was awesome. actually, you know, it was a, it was a nice thing. I, I was really proud to uh, to have been a part of that, and, and it makes you also feel good that you're able to help other people out. And, uh, you know, I, I was really proud that Bruce got on the show. That's awesome. Oh, Listen, very nice. You know what I wanted to ask you? Uh, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, being a big movie buff that you are, like, what, what's your favorite line in a movie? I know mine. Oh, I God. Mine uh, that's a tough one. Um, it's funny. I, I kind of posted something the other day on Facebook. Um, if you've ever seen Goonies, uh, there's a part where yeah. all the all the young guys are, are hanging out in, in uh, Mikey's house, and there's that statue of the little naked guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember and, that. Statement. And the statue like falls and breaks. And, <laughs> yeah, I remember and, that part. Yeah, and um and Mikey picks it up and he, and he picks up like the penis that fell off and he goes, "That's my mom's favorite piece." <laughs> and uh and uh and um Mouth comes back with the line, "You wouldn't be here if it wasn't." That's like my probably one of my favorite lines in all the uh in in, in movies. My favorite line. We That's just uh, we just uploaded uh, some of our favorite lines in a movie. Uh, it's got to be yeah, good. Yeah, I have a favorite line tonight, thanks to Chris. What's that? What line Not is Chris that? Chris Algieri, DJ Midlife, Chris, my Chris. I have a, a favorite line for the right. week. Here it is. For the week. You... I think, yeah, I think for the entire week we've been planning this show, and I, I Chris has just been relentless. Relentless. There's no <laughs> other word to, to say. So Chris, I'm a ball, I'm a ball buster. Go ahead. That's good, me bust, too. We probably get along really ball. well. Here you go. Go, and bust, yeah, go bust my balls. Play the line, my favorite line from the movie that pertains to you. Okay, here he goes. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> really funny. Uh, what do you mean I'm funny? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know. It's a good story. It's funny. You're a funny guy. <laughs> what do you mean? You mean the way I talk? What? It's just, you know, you, it's, you're just funny. It's... You know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how? I mean, what's funny about it? Tommy, no, you got it all wrong. Oh, oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? You're right. Funny how? What? Just, you know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> you mean, so, let me understand this, because I don't, you know, maybe it's me, I'm a little fucked up, maybe. Well, I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? <laughs> not just... You know how you tell a story? What? That's a favorite line. Is that, is that a classic line or what from a movie? Oh, without a doubt, Goodfellas is such a, an unbelievable <laughs> movie. Like, I, I, I felt like Chris is clown all week. We've been actually Chris and I have been inseparable for like the past like three weeks putting this show together, and I swear I was like I was the. I don't know, what do you, uh, say each I was the joke of everything. No matter what he <laughs> did, I was the joke. So when we were, t- tonight we were together, he's like, we're going to ask that to save a movie. I go, well, I got mine. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, save no, I, I actually, I love Goodfellas. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite, favorite movies. And uh, I love when uh, Joe Pesci starts shooting the gun and go, dance, spider, dance. Yeah. Oh, that's a yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. There's so many. There are so many classic uh, lines in that movie. And in fact, the uh, the bar scene, uh, the bar uh, that they film that scene in, is basically not too far from uh, where I live. Uh, and uh, you go inside, and you're just you're just transported back to the movie. It's amazing. They really didn't change anything on the inside. On the outside, they did. 
They've kept everything the same on the inside. It's amazing. You walk in and you feel like you're going to see Robert De Niro. That's you know awesome. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Is that the scene where uh, where Karen and, and uh, uh, what's his name? I'm sorry. Ray Liotta's character. Yeah. Henry. Karen, Henry. Karen and Henry, when they walk through the basement into the into the place? No, no, that's that's a different place. No, that's that's the club. That's the oh, club. I'm okay. talking about. I'm talking about the bar scene where they go after the big heist. You know, after the big uh, 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 the heist uh, that they that they did at Kennedy Airport. Oh, okay, going? yeah, the, the Lufthansa heist. Yeah, yeah, they basically right. go to that bar scene, and he tells uh, he tells one of the uh, characters, uh, De Niro tells one of the characters, uh, you know, he shows him the pink the pink Cadillac. He goes, "Oh, look what I got." He goes, "Take it back, take it back." That bar scene right there. That, well, that's, that's not a great too far. scene. Yeah. yeah. It's an- it's yeah. amazing. Now, you know what I wanted to ask, speaking of movies, David? Uh, now, we just had, uh, you know, the um, the welterweight, undefeated, I guess, champion, Chris he's Algerian. Not, no, he's not a champion. Fighting. He's not a champion. Yeah, if you're going to be around, you should you should come to the fight. He's the wel- undefeated welterweight. Um, he's not a champion, uh, uh, Alicia. He's he's the undefeated light welterweight uh, boxer. He's not a champion yet. Oh, okay. He was, so he was, a, he was, he was, a, he was a kickboxing champion, but he's not a, a, a champion in boxing right now. Oh, but not in boxing, yeah. But who knows? Maybe he will be uh, February 23rd at the Paramount. He's going to be fighting um, that Saturday. But what I want to talk, speaking of your favorite movies, what did you think of all the Rocky movies, or do you like any boxing movies? Oh, yeah. I mean, actually, I think Rocky is probably one of the greatest movies of all time. I mean, uh, the best the best part about Rocky is it's such an underdog story, and how could you not love it? Like, how could you not mm-hmm. love that character coming from nowhere and becoming a somebody? I mean, that's that's yeah. what it's all about, you know? And you, can you see yourself? Can you see yourself in, in Rocky being that you, you, you're, trying to, you're trying to make a name for yourself? I mean, uh, do you feel like that? Like, you, have you been knocked down a lot in life? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely been knocked down a lot in life. I think I think pretty much everybody has. Um, you know, there are always people that'll that'll tell you, "Oh, it's uh, you're never going to make it. It's 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 one in a million shot to make it in in your industry." And you know, those people drive you a little further to want to want to succeed more because it's you know, when you get knocked down, you want to get up. You want to you want to learn from everything. And and uh, you know, I try not to let uh, the negativity of people bother me. I try and just turn it into a positive, and you know anybody that would say something you know negative i you know it's just more the reason why you want to succeed right right I want to go into uh my my favorite line of uh speaking of boxing movies uh actually not boxing but because uh, i'm getting i'm getting uh raging bull confused with with this movie where this uh this clip is from uh this is from uh, taxi with uh Robert de Niro. This is my favorite line uh, of uh, i think all time. You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Is that a great line or what? I mean, that's that's amazing. <laughs> that's another classic. I just classic. said that yesterday at 7-Eleven. <laughs> It's another classic movie. It seems like you uh, you like a lot of Scorsese. Yes, I love him. I mean, what's not to like? Everything he touches, I mean, it's like it turns to gold. You know what I mean? And Taxi, like I seen Taxi, I, I saw Taxi the other day, and I'm like, I could watch this movie over and over again. I mean, De Niro is just so he's so raw yet talented in this movie. It's amazing, you know. Yeah, Taxi Driver is definitely a classic. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. we learned, we we had to watch a bunch of those in 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 film school. Right. Um, and it's funny how you guys brought in Goodfellas earlier. Um, I did like a whole paper on that back in college, you oh, know, really? about, yeah, cause, you know, we had to analyze different films and you had to choose which one you want to analyze. And actually that was the one I analyzed. There was a couple of amazing shots, you know, like how I had mentioned the basement right. and they walked through that basement, the, the camera just amazing. went amazing. with them. It was a steady cam yeah. shot that was like a minute and a half. So the amount of time it must've taken to pre-light that whole scene and, and get it right, it's, it's just unbelievable. You know, it's so funny that people don't realize, even like uh, when you when like uh, you know when you DJ as well, like uh, people don't don't realize the the uh, intricacies that it takes to 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 make a good mix. Uh, uh, tell us tell us something that you had uh, you, uh, when you first went to film school, and tell us what film school you went to, and tell us what uh, what was your most difficult part of uh, going to film school. Like, uh, what did you have the most problems with, and uh, that that you've conquered. 
Well, I, I went to Towson University. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just did an undergrad, and I didn't actually go for a master's in film. Um, but uh, I, I majored in, in film and television. It was a mass communications major. Um, as far as, like, hard film stuff, uh, you know, I learned to cut film, <clears throat> excuse me, actually cutting the film. So, like, we shot on film, and then we had to splice the film and put it all, to, you know, splice it together. And right. it wasn't like today where you're editing on a computer. My senior year, we started editing on computers. Um, but up until then, it was either reel-to-reel with, like, a VHS deck right. or, or cutting the actual film, and that right. was really hard. Right. Um, but, I mean, you know, look, uh, developing a story takes a long time. I mean, it could take years to put together a script that you're really happy with and that you want to try and get out there. Right. Um, mm. And not only that, you know, uh, getting getting a crew together, you need to get the right people involved to help you out. So you know, every little bit of filmmaking, to be quite honest with you, every bit takes time. It's not just one little thing. Every aspect takes time. And, and you can't do it alone. You need a team of people. Um, I mean, and I'm talking like, a team that's going to stand by you and help you all the way through. It's it's funny that you say that uh, uh Alicia and I, Alicia, we met uh, Jenny Jenny Costa, right? She uh yes. we went to dinner with her and she gave us I don't know if you know who Jenny Costa is. She's a KTU, she's a she's a legend. You know, she's been DJing since she was 14 and she's still DJing, you know what I mean? And uh she tells us about the progression of uh of all the technology and how it's gotten easier for the DJ. Um would you say that would you say the same thing about producing a movie? Well, I don't think it's gotten necessarily easier because if you're going to do a film right, um, you know, like if you're going to do a narrative film, you still need to light the set. You know, you see, you see the whole scene. You need to light the scene. Um, you need to have uh, the same amount of people on hand as you would. The difference is it's more affordable now because what happens is with, with the digital cameras out there now, I mean, you could purchase a digital camera for five or six thousand dollars and the image will be like unbelievable right. whereas back in the day if you didn't have a film camera you couldn't shoot right you, you know it was going to be nothing but that's what's made it easier but as far as the the filmmaking process in itself um uh, i mean the process gets cut down a little bit i think now because you don't have to develop the film um and all you know all those different steps so a few steps get cut out uh but again you know the whole movie making process in itself shooting scenes lighting scenes um editing and all that it it's it's still a ton of work right yeah oh well wow. now chris um chris was telling me before that you guys had a little conversation during the week and that speaking of film and the arts and the media that you might have had a little dabbling in the radio business. So huh. speaking that this is our first radio show, can you partake in a conversation about your experience in radio? Well, I wouldn't actually call what I did a <laughs> oh, radio show. Oh, and this show. one time at band camp? Hello? Get it. <laughs> oh, and this one time at band camp? I'm just queuing you. I'm just queuing your camp story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Um, yeah, no, Chris and I did speak. Um... I wouldn't call it a radio show. Uh, what it was is, uh, well, I mean, I guess in, in my own kind of way, it was a radio show. Uh, I went to sleepaway camp. I was about 11 years old, and uh, late at night in the bunk when everybody was sleeping, I used to do this little show. I called it, I called it the David Cohen Show. And we would have, we would do it That's like once, thanks. <laughs> so we would do it like totally once or twice hot. a week, and I would have different guests from the bunk come in and I would talk to them and there would be like a crowd of, you know, people around listening to the little show and we recorded on cassette tapes. And unfortunately, I don't have any of the cassettes or I would play it for you guys now. Um, ah. But uh, I'll tell you, it was actually really fun. I, I always, when I was a kid, and I, it's probably, I don't know if I should say this, but my dad used to like listen to Howard Stern and when I would go to work with him in the, in the car, we would be listening to Howard Stern on the radio. And so I always, you know, I, I love Howard. I think his show is hilarious. Um, and uh, so I always kind of like was like, oh, I, that would be fun to have my own little show. So somehow, I don't know how, it just one night I just said, hey, I'm going to do this little radio show. And people wanted to be on it. And that was did, it. Did you have a sidekick? Did you have like a, a sidekick that would sit at the end of the couch? No, I was I was the guy. It was like, you were the guy? Yeah, it was just me, and, 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 me and, and whoever the guest was. And that was really it, you know. 
That's hilarious. Now, why do you why why do we refer to you as David Seth Cohen? But back then, when you did your little radio gig, you were only David Cohen. Well, um, my full name is David Seth Cohen. It's my birth That's name. That's a great name. Chris and I were talking about that before. I wanna, you know what? You know what it was name. before before you answered, David. This is what happened. Me and Alicia had a conversation, right? We, we we've been uh, you and I have been in communication on Facebook, whatever. And I remember uh, one conversation we had. I go, I go. Uh, I don't know if I said David Seth Cohen. I said Seth or whatever. You were like, yeah, you called me. Yeah, Seth. that's my middle. That's my middle name. I'm like, I don't know how to take that. Does he want me to call it, or does he want me to call him <laughs> Seth? Does he not want me to call him Seth? Like, I didn't know how to take it, you know. So I was like, I asked Alicia. I go, Alicia, should I call him Seth? Should I call him David? What should I call him? Well, I said, call him David Seth Stern. David Seth Stern, yeah. David Seth Cohen, that's how Wait, 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 wait. That's no. a Freudian slip. What's up with that? David <laughs> Seth. That's amazing. Well, did, uh, well, Are you married I, to him well, no, Are you single? Are you single? Uh, I'm I'm dating somebody right now. Oh, you are dating somebody right yeah. now. Mazel tov. Thank, hey, you. Thank you. Hey, uh, we have uh, <laughs> we got a message on Facebook. <laughs> this is pretty funny. I, I know you'll take it good because, you know, you're, you're into comedy, right? Uh, yeah. Casey from Lido Beach uh, said, what kind of camp did you go to? Was it fat camp? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've actually never been uh, really overweight. Right. Um, I've I've had my chunky days, but um, those oh, were please, few and far between. Mine now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I actually went to Camp White Oaks, and it's actually cool that you guys brought that up. I... I uh, our camp closed down years back, and, uh, you know, there's so many great people that I met at Camp White Oaks. Um, and actually, uh, you know, I wonder if any of them are listening right now, but one of them is actually uh, one of my friends, Blake Ian. He's a musician, right. so uh, people should definitely check out his music, uh, 27productions.com. Right. Uh, Blake Ian is awesome. He went to my camp, and, uh, you know, there are a lot of other uh, great people that, that came out of there. I was gonna have- oh, I have a question. I actually got a private text message from Diane. Diane Mulvey, she is uh, – Diane and I actually met on the scene for – on the Discovery Channel, Discovery Investigations Channel. Um, we are going to be airing live, but I think it's February 26th on Discovery. We're doing one of their crime scene investigation shows. It is called Dirty Little Secrets. But Very Diane cool. is texting me now. Yeah, she wants to know um, – Another question is, do, do you have a release date set yet for any, whether it's for Finding Sandler or for any of your up-and-coming movies? Any new release dates in 2013 that we can look forward to seeing you? I would love to say yes, but at this point we don't have a specific date for release yet. Um, mm-hmm. But but people could keep, continue to check back onto our Finding Sandler website, the official site, which is FindingSandler.com. Okay. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, within the next few weeks, most likely, we'll be launching the site, and we will be keep we will keep updating everybody on you know the progress with Finding Sandler. We have a lot of footage to go through. There's uh, over 90 hours of footage to mm. uh, to cut together. Plus, we're planning on shooting some more stuff. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot to do. Uh, David, uh, you never answered my question. Do you want me to call you Seth? Uh, you could call me Dave or David. <laughs> um, I usually pretty much answer to anything. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's really your call. But uh, right. Dave or David is usually what everybody calls me. I'll call you I'll call you Dave, man. I'm just busting your chops. Can I call you Christine? No, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I grew up I grew up in uh, when, when I was going to elementary school, like my teachers my teachers just call me Christine because oh, they thought hilarious. it was yeah, cuz it looks like a female name. I can understand it, you know. So I'm used to it. No, you got the little O on the end, man. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Now, I've been doing a lot of baking lately, so I may enter my own Cupcake Wars. Can I call you to do the video? Sure. Give me a shout. All right. I'll give you a shout out, Mr. David Seth Cohen. Well, yeah. thank you so much uh, for calling before, in. Can you give us all your links before yeah. we end? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, if people still want to donate to our Kickstarter, like I said, we have uh, roughly uh, 13 hours to go, and um, they could go to either Kickstarter and search for Finding Sandler, or they could just go to FindingSandler.com, click on my face, it'll take them right to the Kickstarter page, and they could donate right there. Uh, If people want to check us out on Facebook, they could go to uh, Facebook.com backslash Finding Sandler. If they want to follow us on Twitter, it's uh, at Finding Sandler. If they want to follow me on Twitter, it's at DavidSethCohen1, the number one. 
And uh, I think that's it. Hey, Dave, uh, I, you, you better invite us to the, to the uh, premiere of this movie when it comes out. Yes, yes, uh, of course. You know? Uh, but it was oh, like... yeah, we better be invited. I'll be insulted if we're not, Mr. Cohen. <laughs> well, listen, you know how many people say that to me. No, but you guys are great. I'd love to have you. Yeah, uh, so it was a pleasure speaking with Seth. Everybody, uh, David Seth Cohen. I keep calling you Seth, and I'm so sorry. That's uh, all right. It's just, it's just I like the name. It's not because I don't I love Seth. I don't know what it is. But, I, promise uh, get, I promise I'll get over it. All right, but, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for being a good sport and uh, answering all our questions. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, if you want to come on again, you're more than welcome, man. Uh, anytime you want to come on, just shoot us a – Shoot us a text or shoot us a, a message on Facebook. Again, we could be reached at the Rendezvous uh, Radio Show on Facebook. Uh, like the page and send us messages. Uh, so far, everybody's been great. They've been sending us uh, questions for our host, uh, for our guest. I'm sorry. And uh, you guys have been great. Thank you for listening. Uh, we're going to take a little musical break now. Uh, but, Seth, again, thank you very much for coming on. All right, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thanks. Stay, t- stay close. Stay in touch. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.